Hello and welcome to this video about the shuffle node. So the shuffle node is a bit of a scary mess at first. Chances are you saw that, you didn't know what was going on, so you went onto YouTube to watch a video and here you are. So let me explain what's going on here. What you need to worry about for now is only the upper part of the shuffle node. What you have here is the input and on the right you have the output. So the input is what comes down the pipe to the shuffle node and the output is what's coming out of the shuffle node. So you have those arrows and what they mean is that out of your RGBA you get your red channel, you get that check mark so it goes right all the way to the red channel of your output. Same thing with the green, goes down, check mark, goes right, it outputs a green. Blue outputs blue, alpha outputs alpha. So that's the way you read it. You don't have to worry about the, this part here or whatever is down there. Now, right now it's not doing anything because red is red, green is green, blue is blue, alpha is alpha. But the way you can use it in this element, you don't have an alpha, it's just black. So maybe we want to shuffle our red channel into the alpha to use it for comp. So the way you do that is that the red goes into the red, but the red also goes into alpha. So red goes on red, and red goes on alpha. And now if you go to your red channel, it's the same as your alpha channel. So that's how you do it. If you wanted to only use the blue channel for your element, you could just go and select blue, blue, blue everywhere. And now, no matter where you go, blue, green, red, it's the same because it's all the original blue channel. So that's one use. But where the shuffle node is very useful is when you work with CG elements. So when you have a CG element like a multipass EXR, you get your RGBA here, but you get a lot of other passes inside the file. So you get your world, your position pass, your specular pass, and so on. So let's say for this example, we want to take the specular pass out. So in the shuffle now, instead of wanting the input to be set on RGBA, we would set it to be on specular. And now, when you go on the shuffle node, you can see it's taking the specular pass out and shuffling into the RGBA. So you can see R becomes R, B becomes B, blue becomes blue. But you can also see that blue becomes alpha and that's not something you want because your alpha just looks like the blue channel and that makes no sense. So what you can do then is to either set your alpha to a 0 or 1, so that would just be a constant black or a constant white, so that's what those are for. But what you want to do is to maybe have your specular but keep the original alpha from the RGBA pass you had up here. So what you would do is to use the other input and you could set it to either RGBA or alpha. Let's just say to RGBA. And you could just go and select this alpha. And now what's happening is that you're using RGB from the specular pass, but using the alpha from your original RGBA. You could just set it to also alpha in this case. And that's where it becomes interesting because you can mix different channels together into a new one. But that's mostly the use you have for it. So What's happening with the shuffle node is that when you do that, the specular pass itself remains unchanged. It stays where it is. But what you had as RGBA has been replaced by the shuffle node. So you lose that RGB information after the shuffle node. And yeah, that's the main use. With CG, you use it all the time. You shuffle things around. And hopefully this video gives you a simple overview of how it works. Maybe things are a bit more clear now. If you still have questions, just comment on the video, I'll be happy to help, and I'll cover the copy and the shuffle copy in the next videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.